Hello, welcome to Brainy Dental. Now based on my years of teaching experience, I have prepared this video in a manner that after watching it, the topic of hand instruments would be completely prepared for the dental students. So let's go ahead and watch. This is the basic instrument set which is needed in the operatory to restore teeth. I would like to make you familiar with each and every one of them so that you are able to identify them and use them easily in your clinic. This first set comprises of the diagnostic instruments. This comprises of the cutting instruments which are used during the cavity cutting procedure. These are the restoring instruments. We will begin by discussing the basic parts of a hand instrument. Each hand instrument consists of three parts. Now what are these? They are the handle, the shank and the working end. Similarly, the handle, the shank and the working end. Coming first to the handle. The handles are used to hold or grasp the instrument. Now the surface of this handle can be smooth or serrated. Here it is serrated. Serrations are preferred because they increase the friction for hand gripping which can prevent the hand from or we can prevent the instrument from slipping while we are working in the mouth. Now these handles are available in variety of sizes and styles. And the diameter of the handle can also vary. These handles they can have fixed tips like here or removable tips as seen in a mouth mirror. This is a shank. It connects the handle with the blade. Now the shanks are mostly rounded and they are tapered. Now the shank may be straight as you can see it here or it may be angulated. When it is angulated it is called contraangled and if the angulation is single like here it is called monoangled if there are two angulations, one here and second here, it is called binangled. The first picture is straight shank, then monoangled, binangled, triple angled, and quadrangled. Now, what is the significance of giving these angulations and why should we make it contraangled? You see, contraangling or angulations are given to bring this working end closer to the long axis of the handle. Now when we do that, it becomes easy for us to manipulate the instrument in the mouth. This is the blade. Blade is the working part of the instrument and this blade bears the cutting edge. You can see it here. Now in non-cutting instruments, the part corresponding to the blade is called a nib and the working surface is called the face. So this is the nib and this is the working surface. Now this is a condenser that we can see. Now the blade may be straight as you can see it here or it may be curved like this. The blade angle is the angle made by the long axis of the blade moving like this with the long axis of the handle. This is a mouth mirror. It is a single ended instrument and the mirror it is detachable from its handle. It has a cone and socket kind of arrangement. Now this mirror can be, disp is, can be disposable, it can be autoclaved. Its functions are to first reflect light into the mouth, you can see it like this, then to provide indirect vision and to retract cheek and tongue during operative procedures. This is an explorer. The explorers have sharp pointed tips 
which are their working ends and this working end can be 1 to 2 mm length till here. Now they are of different shapes and sizes. This particular shape is known as the shepherd hook explorer. Now the shape, this shape is called the Orbons explorer. Now the functions of the explorer, this particular shape is to detect caries, calculus, furcation involvements and tooth surface irregularities. And this particular shape is especially useful for detecting caries on the proximal surfaces of the teeth that is the mesial and the distal lens. This is a straight explorer. Its functions are same as the curved ones in detection of caries, calculus and vocation involvements. This is a periodontal probe. It has a handle, a shank and a working end. Now this working end is in form of a thin metal rod with a blunt tip here. And on the metal rod there are different markings present. And these markings are calibrated with the millimeter length of the scale. This is 1 millimeter, 2, 3, 5 and so on. Now the shank you can see is angulated. It is so done so that it can easily have an access into periodontal pockets. Its uses are to detect the depth of periodontal pockets, to detect calculus and to determine the course of the periodontal pockets. This is a tweezer. Its working end is angulated and narrow. It may have a plain tip or a serrated tip. Here are serrations are present here and it may be locking type or plain. Its functions are to grasp the cotton or small instruments and to transfer them from one end of the oral cavity to other or inside the cavity to outside. This is an enamel hatchet. It is used for cutting enamel. It is a double-ended instrument which means that the handle has blades on both the ends. Now it is a single beveled instrument in which the blade has only one bevel. Now these single beveled instruments they occur in pairs the right and the left side. This is a gingival marginal trimmer or GMT. It is a double ended instrument that means there are two working ends on either side of the handle. Now this instrument has a curved blade and it has a mesial pair and a distal pair. Now each of these mesial and distal pairs is either a right beveled instrument or a left beveled instrument. Now how do we find that? You pick the instrument up, you hold it in pen grasp with the cutting edge facing downwards and then you notice the observe the bevel. Now in this case the bevel is present here on the right side so it is right beveled. Now if we do it here we will observe that the bevel is present on the left side so it is a left beveled instrument. Now how do we identify the mesial and the distal GMT? It is very simple. I have devised a simple way. Now you observe this is the blade and this is the lower angle and this is the upper angle. Let me get it closer. This is the blade and this is the lower angle. This is the upper angle. In a mesial GMT, the lower angle is acute or sharp like this. Whereas when you observe the distal GMT, Here the lower angle is obtuse or you can say more blunted whereas the upper one is acute. So you can see the lower angle here is obtuse. So to avoid confusion just stick to one angle on one side of the blade. If the lower angle is acute we call it a mesial GMT. If your lower angle is obtuse we call it a distal GMT. 
I hope you remember this now. Its uses are that it is used to bevel the gingival margin on the mesial or the distal side of a class 2 cavity. Now in this case, this is a distal occlusal class 2 cavity and we have distal gingival margin. So to bevel this, we will use a distal GMT. Now pick up a distal GMT and we hold it in pen grasp like this and we use it in this motion to bevel the distal gingival margin. Also, it is used to bevel or round off the axiopulpal line angle of the cavity. This is a spoon excavator. It is a double ended instrument. Now in this instrument, the cutting edge is circular. This is the cutting edge, it is circular, so it is also called discoid. Now this instrument is used for removing caries, excavating caries from the cavity preparation and sometimes it can also be used for carving say amalgam or direct wax patterns. This is a straight chisel. It is a cutting instrument. It's cutting edge. This is the cutting edge. It is lying perpendicular to the long axis of the handle. Now this chisel is used in push motion like this. This is a hoe. It is a single ended instrument with the working end present only one side of the handle. In the hoe, the cutting edge is present perpendicular to the long axis of the handle. This is the cutting edge here. Now a hoe is used in a scrapping motion towards the operator in this manner. It is basically used to clean and smooth the floors and walls of the cavity preparation, especially for planing the internal line angles of a class 3 or a class 5 cavity for direct cold restorations. This is a cement spatula. They are used for mixing restorative material on a glass slab or a paper pad. This is a plastic filling instrument. These instruments are so called because they carry and handle the restorative material in plastic stage. That is the stage after mixing and before setting of the cement when it is in plastic form. Now this particular plastic filling instrument is called Woodson Cement Carrier and Condenser. You can see it is double ended. One end is paddle end and the other end is condenser end. The paddle end is flat, long and it is rounded whereas the plugger end is smooth and shaped like a condenser. The paddle end is used to carry the restorative material to the cavity preparation and the plugger end is used to condense the restorative material inside the cavity. These are amalgam condensers, they are double ended instruments. Now depending upon the shape of the working end, the name is given. This is a parallelogram condenser and this is a cylindrical condenser. Now if you see closely, it is shaped like a parallelogram and the face has serrations present on it which are useful in condensing amalgam. Now this, this is a cylindrical condenser. Here also there are serrations present. These are carving instruments. This is a Holland back carver. This is a half Holland back carver. And this is a diamond carver. They are all used for carving restorative material especially amalgam.
This is a ball burnisher. It is a double ended instrument. It is working end is shaped like a ball. Let me show you. Now this ball is of different sizes. It is bigger size on this end and the smaller size on the other end. Now the basic now the basic use for this is to smoothen and to compact the restoration after it has been condensed in the cavity and to remove any surface irregularities that might be present. I hope you enjoyed your video. All the data in this video has been taken from textbook of operative dentistry by Sumita Sandhu. It can be brought from Amazon. The link of it has been given in the description box below. Do check it out. Thank you.